In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare your sample for NMR spectroscopy so that you can get good data. After I show you how to properly prepare the sample, I'll show you some examples of poorly prepared samples which will likely result in bad data. To prepare your sample for NMR spectroscopy, you need to use an NMR tube. Um, in our lab, we use 5mm NMR tubes, and in the stockroom, they carry three different grades of NMR tubes. The cheap economy tubes are identified with a red cap, and they are good for basic samples, but have poor quality control over the dimensions, and may not always give you uh, good data. If you get a bad data set, you may want to consider trying a better tube. The tubes I recommend that you use for routine data collection are rated for 400 megahertz and are labeled with WG1228. These ones should give you reasonable data for any normal uh, NMR sample. However, if you're going to be running for extended periods of time, doing variable temperature, or reusing your tube, then I recommend you use a higher quality tube, such as this 528PP tube. This tube has a smaller diameter on the, uh, on, the, on the wall and is made out of a different kind of glass which has fewer paramagnetic impurities and is better able to handle temperature cycling. So this is the tube I would recommend for more precious samples. To pre prepare your tube, I recommend that you prepare your sample in a vial first and then transfer it into an NMR tube. The amount of material that you will need will range from about 1 to maybe 10 to 20 milligrams for a uh, proton spectrum and uh, as much sample as you can get for a carbon s sample without having a precipitate. You can probably do 10 milligrams or 20 for a reasonable carbon. If you have less and still need carbon, contact me and we can discuss other options. Having too little sample will uh, greatly lengthen your experiments and may make it impossible to get data, as NMR has very high resolution and information content, but has very low sensitivity. Okay, so I'm going to prepare a sample. I'm going to wipe down a spatula and take a small amount of a sample. In this case, it is quinidine, just a standard material for testing. And I will put a little bit into a vial. Then we're going to add the solvent. For NMR, you almost always need a deuterated solvent. Some deuterated solvents come in sealed ampules. These will protect them from moisture and give you a convenient single sample amount of solvent to use. In this case, it's DMSO D6, which is uh, very hygroscopic and will absorb uh, moisture from the air, so you would want to use it in a sealed ampule. For some solvents, such as chloroform, they're not quite as hydroscopic and you can buy a bulk uh, bottle of solvent such as this. Um, so I'm going to prepare a sample with chloroform. If you wish and your solvent is compatible, you can use this sort of pipette and the recommended amount is at least 0.6 milliliters of solvent. More up to maybe one milliliter is reasonable. Less than 0.6 milliliters starts to make the sample too short and will cause problems. Um, if your solvent's not compatible or if you don't have this type of pipette, you can use a glass pipette, the standard Pasteur pipette. And you don't have to be super accurate with the amount of solvent that you put in there, but it should be between 0.5 and 1 milliliters, closer to 0.6 or 7 if possible. So we're going to add it to the vial. And then we want to get all of our sample to dissolve. One way to do this is to use a vortexer. This will help rapidly dissolve whatever material was in there. We do not want any solid particles in the sample. If there still are solid particles in the sample, one way to avoid getting this into your NMR sample is to use a simple uh, glass wool filter, which can be done like this. So you put a small amount of glass wool or other filter material, and then you would pipette your sample through here into the NMR tube. If your sample does not have solids, you can avoid this, but just beware that solids will negatively affect the quality of your sample. OK, 
Okay, so now that the sample is dissolved, I am going to pipette up the material. If you have solids on the bottom, be careful not to suck them up. And then we are going to put them into the tube. You can put any remaining solvent back into the vial. Put the cap on the tube. This is a reasonable amount. Um, somewhere between, some people use a rule of thumb, two fingers. About uh, three to four centimeters is a good amount. The reason we need this height of, of sample is that we want the ends of the sample to be far away from the detection coil. So to see what I'm talking about, I'm going to put the sample into a spinner. In this case, this is a Varian spinner. So I will put the tube into the spinner and then put it into the depth gauge to properly adjust the height. If your sample's tall enough, you can just push it down to the bottom of the depth gauge. If it's not tall enough, then what you want to do is center it on this center line. It's actually marked CL for center line. The dashed box here indicates the volume of the sample that's actually being observed. This is the part where the coil is. The sample needs to extend out above and below the coil because the ends of the sample distort the magnetic field and cause the resolution to be uh, worse on your sample. So if your sample is a little bit shorter, then what you can do is not push it to the bottom, but you could center it on the center line. However, if your sample is too short, then the ends will get too close to the coil and this will cause poor quality spectra. In this case, it's tall enough and this would be fine. Um, another type of spinner is the ones that are used for the Brooker samples, the Brooker instruments. They go into a spinner that looks like this and they have a similar depth gauge that looks something like this. And again, you can just push it down either to the bottom or until you center it on the center line, which is marked here. Okay. This is what a properly prepared sample looks like and should give you reasonable data. Some examples of improperly prepared samples look like this. So this sample is far too short. It will give you a very poor looking spectrum. This sample has solid particulates in it. Again, this will make the sample inhomogeneous. If you have any particles and they fall down to the bottom of the tube, they will likely not ad and adversely affect your spectrum. However, if they're stuck to the wall or floating around, as they are in this case, they're going to give big problems on your NMR spectrum. Also, if you have particles stuck to the outside of the wall, or fingerprints or other issues on the outside of the tube, these can also cause problems. So before you put the sample into the instrument, it's a good idea to wipe it down with a Kim wipe. A sample like this has precipitate in it and is far too long. It's likely due to somebody preparing their sample inside of the NMR tube. Um, this again is gonna give very poor quality data unless you're able to push the tube far enough down to get this material outside of the region that's being detected. However, if you put the tube too far down, what will happen is that it will hit the bottom of the probe inside the magnet and could break your tube and cause, cause a problem. So never set your tube below the maximum depth indicated on the depth gauge, because if it goes too far down, it'll break as it, it could break as it enters the, the instrument. And finally, here's an example of a sample that is likely too concentrated. Now, more sample is better for um, especially carbon data, but if you get extremely concentrated samples, then what will happen is something called radiation damping will artificially broaden the lines and you'll get a much poorer resolution spectrum than you might expect. Okay, to recap, you should prepare your sample for NMR in a high quality NMR tube with about 0.6 milliliters of deuterated solvent Resulting sample should be a homogeneous liquid and placed properly within the NMR sample depth gauge. In a later video, 
We're going to cover some more advanced methods for preparing samples for NMR, including sealed tubes, shigami tubes, and tubes with different diameters. We'll also talk about the theoretical reasons why proper NMR sample preparation matters, and we'll show you some real-world results of improperly prepared samples and the results on the data.